what is happening right now like the relationship as it was ended pulls out a ring are you actually doing this right now let's get ready while i tell you guys the story of when i was proposed to so that i would not go through with a breakup yeah i was in a toxic relationship there's so many stories that i can give you from that but we'll save those for like a different get ready with me today we're just talking about the proposal i'm gonna start by prepping my skin i'm gonna be using this loxiton emulsion don't mind me this thing is like wobbly it was broken in the mail so i just like i love the product so i'm trying to use it but it's like wobbly and i keep i keep struggling a little bit this smells absolutely divine and it like hydrates my skin like deep deep inside since we started by using loxiton i'm just gonna go in with this serum and i'm going to apply that and then use this loxiton moisturizer oh man i forgot to turn on my lights hold on by the way if you like my headband i would really appreciate it if you could support my small business it would mean the absolute world to me i i don't know like the start of the year is always so, so slow for my small business so if you're interested in headbands or a scarf or scrunchies that's all on justalina.com. You can use the code GRWM, get ready with me, for 20% off the entire site. And I actually also created a digital planner as well as like this digital life reset workbook, which I'm actually working through instead of New Year's resolutions. So if you're interested, um, you can get those as well. But yeah, we're basically talking about this toxic relationship. And I'm not trying to like bring up anything from the past. Like the past is the past. I've moved on. I'm in like a really good healthy relationship now for a while. Like this happened years ago and the reason why I'm bringing it up is because these stories are still part of who I am and I kind of feel so bad that like when I was going through this toxic relationship and all of this, I completely fell off the face of the earth. Like I just stopped posting content. Like you guys just started commenting and saying like, you seem really different. Like I hope everything's okay. I just kind of lost my sparkle. Like I lost, I lost what made me, me. And that is so scary and so dangerous for like a person because if you feel like you are losing yourself in a relationship, you need you need to reevaluate whether or not it's you or whether or not it's the relationship, but something is not right because a healthy relationship, you should be able to feel like confident enough that you have like some sort of independence in a way, but also like confident enough to trust the other person that you don't have to like wholeheartedly consume like the entire relationship being your your whole entire identity. I'm using this shade called Boring from the Naked Sin palette because it's like a little bit of a pinky colored neutral and I think I'm gonna start with neutrals but I think I'm gonna add a little bit of color to this feeling like a pink look today. This relationship was plagued with a lot of lies, a lot of manipulation, uncertainty because I still to this day don't know if I was truly cheated on in like reality like in the physical aspect i definitely know i was cheated on like emotionally because constantly found messages between him and other girls constantly like was lied to about him talking to other girls still had like his ex that he was leading on still had like so many different things who knows but i didn't like keep tabs on him to be able to find out whether or not he actually went and like in real life like cheated on me at some point point. and I don't really like care to find out because I feel like I still got betrayed anyway and betrayal is betrayal and I'm not trying to like bring up anything because I'm trying to share my story so that just in case one of you is going through something like this you can like see that you're not alone I just think that we need to stop protecting and like hiding the stuff that people do I haven't spoken to this person in years I don't know what they're up to it all like rooted into I guess this individual having a lot of insecurities a lot of like tension and trauma that led him into addiction and the addiction is what caused a lot of the secrets the weird behaviors and the inconsistencies and in the end I just had to leave because you can only save somebody so many times before it starts like really affecting you because you can't save somebody that doesn't want to be saved and I was always like embarrassed to like bring it up or say that this is something that I dealt with but I think there's like way 
way too many people that have been in toxic relationships that don't voice the fact that they have been, they take a toll on you. They change who you are, especially when you start out being like a naive girl like me. Like I didn't think anybody would ever lie to me. You know, if like you told me that like you're messaging this girl because she's a friend's friend, I would believe you until there's a reason not to and I definitely behaved erratic in that relationship as well because I was always in fight or flight and there was always lies to me and like it's almost like the gaslighting made me not trust my own self and my own judgment because like now I'm in a relationship and I like never check my boyfriend's phone like I trust him so much he trusts me we know each other's passwords like if I needed to I could go look but it's like even if I do like there's nothing to see ever like he's he's an honest guy like this is a healthy relationship and it's like we both have been hurt in ways like in our past relationships that have like really made it obvious to both of us that the other one is never going to do anything horrible like that because it was the absolute worst kind of pain to go through personally so I would never absolutely like do that to anybody else because you don't deserve to feel that I'm kind of vibing with this color it was a normal type of thing for me to sleep over this guy's house I would stay over and his parents were there like you know we'd be in his room when he would fall asleep or when he would leave the room I would usually like look at his phone I couldn't just like straight up ask him what was going on he would always like try to hide things and I would always just check to see if he had been talking to this one guy who he would always get his illegal substances from and I would worry about that because like obviously I like the only thing I wanted from him was for him to get clean and for him to just like behave faithfully to me. I ended up stumbling upon some messages. Now my ex never really saved numbers, specifically the people that were for his like illegal substances and stuff, but he also didn't save the number for his ex and for this one girl that he was like friends with, but like more than friends kind of. I don't know, he would make excuses, but it's probably because he thought that I wouldn't notice if like a random number texted him versus like if it said like the name of his ex or something. I would be more upset which is silly because regardless I'll be upset like why are you talking to other women like that because he would constantly lead them on and tell them like oh I'm not in a relationship or, or like yes I want to be with you you know stuff like that which I would bring up to him and be like listen you can't lead other women on like you either want to be with me or you want to be with them like you can't just like you have to tell them like sorry I'm in a relationship don't hurt their emotions by consistently like still playing emotional intimacy type of aspect whenever they bring up stuff to you like you can't say like I care about you as well like you you just can't say stuff like that so I come across this string of messages and in there was probably the most horrible thing I could find but it wasn't the most horrible thing I could find the most repulsive thing I found that's a whole diff that's a whole nother story after that I was like I can't be with this person but after this one I mean I also thought like I can't be with this person but anyways sorry he ended up having a message with a girl a girl from like Miami or something something really random and she was like pretty and she ended up messaging with him they were messaging for like a while like I'm talking Talking like a few weeks and the thing is I had previously asked him because I saw that he started following her on Instagram or like he commented on something and I had brought it up to him I was like who is this and why are you commenting on this person like and he gave me an excuse like oh my friend is talking to her so I'm just trying to like feel her out or something for him something dumb that I should have known was an excuse but alas I was naive and young so he ends up not even knowing that I look through his phone because I think after I saw this my little thing is I would always like take screenshots of the things that I would see or like a picture on my phone of his phone screen so that I could save it in like a hidden folder on my phone because I constantly like when I say constantly I mean like constantly would forget the bad things he did to me and I don't know if it's something wrong with me or if it's just like something that happens to people that are like in trauma but but I, if I didn't, like, while I'm reading it, I'm literally having, like, a panic attack, like, reading this stuff. Because I knew that I couldn't make an excuse for him this time. Like, this was obvious to me. Like, this is obvious. Like, he is clearly, like, cheating on me, like, emotionally with this other woman. And she doesn't know about the relationship. She's just being herself, whatever. 
but she's sending him inappropriate photos. He's sending her messages that are just super inappropriate. Things that he's never even said to me in a way, but like, thank God not to me because like, I'm not that type of person, you know? So it's like really gross and sexual stuff. And like, I don't know, to me, I was just like taken back. I was like, oh my gosh, like what, what have I gotten myself into? So I took a step back and recorded that video, like the conversation as I'm like scrolling, I'm like recording it on my phone so that I could look at it when I wasn't in like pure panic. Because when you're in pure panic, like you can't absorb anything. I did that and I put the phone down, I grabbed my stuff and I left his house and I had to sneak out to make sure his like parents or whoever were not awake so that I didn't have to confront them because then they would ask me like why I'm leaving in the middle of the night. And it was like midnight or something and I couldn't go home because then my parents would be awake and they would see me like in distress and my family didn't know at the time like what was going on and like thank goodness because my mom was like, like, super worried about me but clearly like I was still trying to make this relationship work through everything that I went through in it so I didn't want to like show him in a poor light until I knew what was going on so in that moment I messaged my best friend from like since we were kids and I went over to her house and I remember sitting there and we were like talking and I was like crying and whatever and I was talking to her about all of this she was like dude he's obviously like this is bad right like you this you you can't be with someone like this and i'm like yeah i know like what am i supposed to do because in previous situations when i tried to leave i would get like manipulated into staying like i would be told that like he he can't like make it without me that you know he would this is a trigger warning like end his own life or something if i wasn't you know around just things that like would put me in a position where it's like i obviously didn't want that to happen but i also knew i couldn't be with him i couldn't leave him when the situation was unstable i didn't tell him that i was leaving and going to my friend's house i think he was probably still sleeping i went and stayed there until like my family probably fell asleep and then i went home and slept there but showing those messages messages to my best friend and her boyfriend was there too. I think they were like traumatized from like reading what they did because they were like nobody should ever have to like see this from like their significant other like that is horrible horrible. Ooh, my foot fell asleep. I'm gonna add this hot pink. That just make the look. I'll read you guys some of the text messages I have from that instance because it's a little bit like difficult to explain unless like you kind of get the play-by-play. But the next day, I mean, I don't have all the screenshots. I used to have, like, more, but after I got into the relationship that I'm currently in, like, it's a healthy relationship and I didn't want a whole, like, folder of, like, trauma on my phone because I would get kind of emotional. I don't think I ever actually fully went through the entire thing because it's so upsetting to think that I allowed myself to be treated like that. I, like told him that I saw those messages and of course he freaked out anytime I would bring up anything whether it would be about like him going to get like illegal substances or him going and talking to people it would always be twisted on me there was always gaslighting about saying that I am always spying on him or I am always checking like his phone or looking through his phone and it's like well if I didn't look through your phone I wouldn't know all this stuff that was happening that's just the thing if somebody's in addiction they usually especially in active addiction it's like they hide a lot of stuff they do okay let me read these messages while i do my foundation so i guess like i don't remember what exactly happened i'm like going off of these text messages i'm using the revlon color stay by the way the one for dry skin i told him i guess i need to like think or something because i saw those messages i'm obviously in like a state of shock immediately this is what happened with every time i would try to break up with him he would try to grab the control back good like thank goodness i'm done like this saves me so much or he would be like really nice and be like okay let me give you your stuff back right like kind of normal but i never know what I would get. So it started with, okay, I'm not going to be out. By the way, his grammar and spelling was always horrible. And he goes, would you rather I mail everything to you or give it to your mom, your choice? And then I said, I told you I can come get it. 
he goes K. And then he says, I need a name to change these like tickets that he had gotten me, supposedly, quote unquote. I need to like talk to you guys about like the gift giving of this relationship too, because I didn't even realize I was like in a relationship kind of with like a narcissist because he always thought he was smarter than everyone else in the room. And like his time was more valuable. So like for gifts, like he would not spend time getting getting gifts ever. It would always be extravagant and last minute. He got me tickets supposedly to a trip that I like literally never saw these tickets. Um, it was just a printout of like possible flights. So I don't even know if he ever like bought them or anything because none of them ever appeared in my inbox ever. It was just like a way for him to talk to me. And I guess like a way for me, like for him to be able to talk to me and like bring something up that he knew I would like answer to. Because for the most part, if I was upset with him, I like really wouldn't answer because I had to like kind of think to myself what exactly was happening. I'm using this Jordana contour stick. So the message goes, when are these tickets for and what are they? He goes, trip to Europe, to where specifically and for when? He goes, B-Day gift, early June, Spain, France, Germany, Ukraine, need my ticket changed to someone else's name. Like, as if I was going to find somebody, like, immediately, I don't know, really weird. Why don't you just keep them for yourself and take one of your friends, is what I said. Because I'm like, I honestly do not need his gifts or any reason to continue talking to him. I'm like, take one of your friends, like, I don't want your birthday gifts, and go. And then he goes, I have no friends to go with, nor want to. You can go with someone. This is not is a part of your present I want you to have. Never, ever got those. And I was in a relationship with him even longer through that. So that was obviously a lie. And I didn't know that. So he wrote me like a whole paragraph about like top tier VIP. So I respond, I really don't understand your actions at all. Where'd you get the money for this? Because it was like super extravagant. And at that time, like he wasn't really working. Like he literally went like, I think like a year of not working. Um, he had his own company and his parents were kind of running it. But like if he didn't show up for like months at a time, like how are you going to get a paycheck, you know? So I go like, how could you be so thoughtful yet so cruel at the same same time because he was trying to be thoughtful now that like he got caught and he always thought he was so smart to be able to weasel his way out of any kind of predicament like so anytime I found something he would always think that he would be so smart to be able to like convince me it wasn't it wasn't him it was for a friend whatever like the excuse was he always thought I was like not smart enough to figure it out so that was at like 10 12 so I'm assuming, I don't know if it was 10, 12 a.m. or p.m. I'm assuming p.m. Um, and then all of a sudden at 10.49, I'm on the phone and I'm assuming I'm on the phone with one of my friends and he starts going bonkers and like call, name calling me, cursing, like saying all these horrible things. And it's probably because like I was just, you know, answering calmly and being like, well, okay, like I don't really need anything from you. Like I don't want anything from you. Stuff like that. I never like in like started any drama. Like I never tried to. I was always just like very normal. I was in shock and I would have panic attacks, but I was always very like stable when it came to like confrontation because I needed to have my facts straight or else I was super easily manipulated at that time of my life. Okay, I'm using this rare beauty blush and nearly neutral. So I'm gonna obviously not say the bad words, but definitely a creative amount of language in here. Remember you acting like this crazy B word <laughs> on a sober mind. It's right here on the phone. If you guys want to see the screenshot. Um, I'm tired of having to constantly hide stuff from you. He used a more colorful word and baby you and treat you like some princess while having to ducking listen to all your dumb rules and your yes he did write ducking and then now f word choking my freedom and using me and keeping me under your control and being like your puppet guess what i have needs and feelings and emotions too and want more than a one suited thing i don't really know how to correct that where i have to watch what i say how and who i talk to where i hang out and you reading my phone because you're an insecure B word. I'm done. We're over. I'm done. So whenever I would try to take the power back into my hands and be like, um, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. He would try to make it like he was the one ending it, not me. Like 
I don't know, maybe it was like an insecurity thing. He also says, I'm finally free and liberated from your bad, bad word, craziness. Finally, don't have to be afraid or worry that you're going to flip out and have a breakdown and temper tantrum on me. And I responded, literally, I responded, okay, because this always happened. So the only times I would ever really like anything would really happen is me looking at his phone, seeing something, confronting him. And then sometimes if it was like a really bad situation, like me seeing that he's like messaging other girls or something, I'm not someone who like argues and like just is fine, you know, like especially about like when it's someone I care about, like I'm going to cry while I'm talking to you about it. And I'd be like, I can't believe you messaged this person. But I was always very stable in the way that I would bring it up. But then like I would start kind of like having not like a breakdown but maybe like a little bit of a panic attack because i would know what's happening and like the manipulation and the gaslighting of trying to confuse me and tell me that like he's not the one messaging this girl it's he's messaging her because his friend asked him to or something like that so it was always very much like all over the place and i would be like looking on his location or stuff like that when his mother would text me and be like do you know where he is he like left the house or when um when i would see that he's at the person who gives him the illegal substances home so yeah and then one time i caught him at an ex's house which she said he was having dinner with her parents but i feel like that's crossing a line too like why didn't you tell me about that there's like so many things like that it just shows you how like you can react differently in like fight or flight horrible toxic relationships because I was always checking his location. I always was like, you know, checking his phone. In my current relationship, I, I don't even check my boyfriend's location. We have each other's location in case like something happens. But I can't remember the last time I looked at it. And I know his password and I don't have to look at his messages because I know he would never do anything. Like even when I do look, like there's nothing there. So then I don't look again because I'm like, nothing's there. But I also... Like, my current boyfriend never gave me a reason not to trust him, you know? So, I don't know. It's like, yes, I was pushing him for things, but it took me a long time to also learn that you can't force somebody to be a better person. Like, they have to choose to be who they are. Like, if someone's showing you that they can't handle your trust and they can't handle, maybe if they're, like, in an addiction, like, they need help and you need to get out of there because you cannot be out here making excuses. I should have been, like... You showed me, I asked you to stop doing the illegal substances. You showed me you can't, I'm out. I asked you to stop messaging or liking other women's pictures on social media and messaging them inappropriate things and asking them out on dates. I shouldn't have given him a chance. But that's what happens when you are blinded by love. Oh my god, wait, take a moment to look at this Kosas lip oil. I'm so obsessed with it. It's in the shade Unhooked. Ready? I don't even need lipstick. Look at how good this is. I'm obsessed. Okay, I need to do lashes or something. Oh, I need to do my eyebrows. So I responded, okay. And then he goes, effing done being suffocated by your craziness and insecurities. You pretend to call love. People who love don't act this crazy and controlling and one-sided and only want things their way. I think uh, asking you not to talk to other women and not to drugs was probably a bare minimum type of thing. But if you want to call that controlling, okay. Goodbye, I'm blocking your number and finally can breathe right? So this is how it always went. So I didn't really get like emotionally invested anymore. In the beginning, I would like allow the way that he spoke to me to take me on an emotional roller coaster. And that is something that like honestly raised my cortisol levels so high. And I'm pretty sure is the reason why all my chronic conditions kind of popped up because they kind of start when you are in a state of like elevated cortisol regularly so high stress really does affect it i said remember what you did it's a result of your choices i honestly like regret getting into that relationship because i feel like my career was doing so well especially with like all this content creation and stuff and then i got into that relationship just fell off the face of the earth you guys were so important to me and i just kind of had to leave because of some guy who was taking up too much of my time and I gave him way too many chances. He he messages me and goes, I wanted to show you that I can get stuff done and be a great asset, blah, 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 blah. So I don't know what that was really talking about. And so he tells me, I wanted to show you that I can change. I even suspended the other number and deleted my Samsung account. So the contacts, contacts and combos aren't stored and transferred and deleted. 
the whole contact list and made this number my new number you're legit the only person that has it like nobody else so basically he deleted his entire number like all the people that he had known on his phone and okay that's a kind gesture to an extent but it's like that's also super suspicious like what do you not want me to see that you have to delete absolutely everything like i never wanted him to delete everything like i just wanted him to stop messaging other women and it's like you can't control your your own self enough that you have to like delete absolutely everything in order to make sure that you don't message other women like that's already a red flag like, that's like a self-control issue which i guess he never understood that so then he goes i didn't want to be forgiven and given a free pass i wanted to earn forgiveness and trust and work for it to prove it to you i deserve it not just want it or for no reason and I reply, it's too late for that. <laughs> Me and my little green text. My lesson has been learned. I wasn't looking for a free pass and a slap on the wrist. I'd never truly learned from. I wanted to show you I deserve to have you and love you and learned to not repeat my mistakes that hurt you the most. Why is it too late? You already moved on. And then I start getting phone calls. It's a phone call after phone call. Just give me five minutes, please. I just want to hear your voice one last time. And he's messaging me from two different numbers, like his old number and his new number. I just want to have the demons leave me alone for five minutes and try to avoid to go into a dark place like I do every other night. I just want to avoid the night terrors and the pain, blah, 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 blah. I promise I'm civil and not going to yell or argue. Just want to have a normal conversation. I'm begging you. I'm in a really dark place. Just please help me. I just want to avoid the terrors. Please, I can't take them any longer. Just five minutes, normal conversation. I'll be able to sleep without any pain. Please. We need to talk about that. Um, I need to put lashes on. I got these Kiss lashes with Meredith Duxbury. Some of them are so intense, but I feel like this is a look that can be intense. So should I do Diva? Should I do Disco Groovy? Or should I do Drunk in Love? I'm gonna try Drunk in Love. This was cyclical, always. And if you're in a toxic relationship, you know this. And it would be like kind of this traumatic... Thing for me until I realized that it was in fact a pattern and I learned to kind of just expect it but I still wouldn't leave necessarily because I was nervous that he would in fact like do something to himself I actually remember on one occasion I had messaged his mother and said hey like we broke up just like keep an eye on him you know I'm worried about his like mental state but the the messages ended up and like in that moment i just didn't know what to think because after seeing the messages that he had sent to that woman and on top of the other things that he had done previously which we can get into that in a different video i just did not have the capacity to be like dealing with that so i would take the time to like mentally just like figure out what i'm doing before actually answering him and he goes this hurts it really hurts i'm in the car still waiting to drive over to to you looking at the phone crying because there's no room for me left in your life anymore being replaced is tough effing pill to swallow i'm gonna be at your house in 10 minutes to leave your stuff so i had not been responding to that at midnight he goes can you please come outside i'm outside and don't want to knock on the door to wake you up i don't i don't know so then the next morning he wakes up and shows up randomly at my house and my parents were there so i guess he like rang the doorbell and my mom let him in because like my family didn't know we were like going through this i kind of just like would not tell my family anything i would just be like oh i'm not seeing him today or something like that like or i'm busy i can't i would keep my family out of the loop which was a mistake but my family also didn't know that he proposed to me until like i got out of the relationship so <laughs> i need to do this eyeshadow really quickly wait i like love how this turned out it's giving like 2016 makeup so he shows up at my parents' house, like I was still living there at the time, and he had like flowers and he just like comes into my room and I couldn't tell if he was sober or not, but like he looked disheveled, like disheveled. And let me tell you, as this relationship went on, like this guy like got more and more disheveled. Like I should have known that he was like an active addiction and it was like something that, you know, was of higher concern. Um, but it's like I, I couldn't do anything because like I was trying to help him and at one point I ended up having to like tell his parents about what was happening because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore, you know, on my own. So he shows up and is like basically begging me to forgive him 
and I'm sitting here shocked because I like didn't expect him to just show up at my house. I was like, what is happening right now? And I'm like just in my room, like on the bed, like just living, laughing, loving, you know? And this man gives me flowers, which obviously I'm like, wow, thank you. But I didn't, this problem showed me that there was like a huge dilemma. Like this message, like I knew like the relationship as it was ended, like period. Like it wasn't gonna be back to normal to what it was. And there was no like hope of like bringing it back to that. But can we talk about this makeup? How do we feel about it? Do we like it? Do we hate it? So he ends up talking to me and all of a sudden pulls out a ring from his pocket. And he goes, you deserve one that is so much bigger, but I literally like just needed to show you a giant like gesture so I got this one and because it's what I could afford right now and like I just wanted to show you that like you know I'm serious about this relationship and stuff and he's on his knee looking disheveled in my bedroom after I had just found him talking to another woman on like messages like in text messages and I'm sitting here I'm like is this man for real like be effing for real like are you actually doing this right now like are you actually doing this right now i knew that like he had just been like on an emotional roller coaster with me and i was like i can't i simply cannot just like be like oh no we're we're done because i'm trying to keep it quiet and hidden from my family like i don't want my family to know that like this is happening right now they didn't even know we were in like a fight or like what's going on so i was like i need to you know keep it civil so i was like i didn't know what to say so i just did the best that i could to keep kind of like the peace and i said i don't know what to say i can hold on to this ring but this doesn't change what you've done and I need to see a change in your behavior if you're serious about this. And like on the outside, I had to pretend like I was so excited or that like I was okay with it. But on the inside, I was like, this is like red flag behavior. I, I don't know what finally led to me understanding this was like red flag behavior, but I was like, this is red flag behavior. Like, you're not supposed to ask somebody to marry them, like, the moment that something, like, chaotic happens and you're trying to keep them around. But he, like, in his mind, like, the next text I got was, like, after he left, he was talking about some Zara pants or something. Like, he went from this emotional roller coaster, devastating thing to just acting like none of that actually happened. And it's wild because he thought that deleting all of his contacts and having only me in his phone was the solution when in reality it's like your behavior was the issue not the fact that you had other people in your phone and it's i don't know and and that didn't stop him because in the future i had other issues with him messaging people other issues of you know drug stuff like it just it was like if the relationship is toxic it's toxic there you don't have to make excuses unless the person actively tries to like fix their behavior and get help especially when it's addiction or something serious like that like you can't just fix that on yourself, like by yourself. And so I just kind of, you know, took the ring. I still have it to this day. I have to take it to a pawn shop. I've had it in like the back of my jewelry box, but I just never gotten, I've never been to a pawn shop. So I, I don't even know where to go or what to do, but I want to get rid of it because it just like takes up space. But it's just like so bonkers because he thought that that is what could have fixed it and about that mentality of thinking that like i guess you're smarter than everyone else and that you can connive your way out of it because the behaviors like were just more and more erratic like towards the end it was it was erratic um and just, i mean i could tell you guys stories again i'm not like trying to be here trying to like bring anyone down like i wish the best for him i hope he got the treatment that he needed i hope that he got the help that he needed and I hope that he finds somebody that he truly loves and learns to like, you know, care for the right way and I hope he doesn't take any other woman through like the trauma he took me through but you can't continue going on like victim mentality because that's how he was. He would always make it seem like he was the one getting a horrible you know, result out of everything, dragging everyone else along. But he, like, I mean, he had a lot of horrible things happen, but a lot of them were the result of his own actions. So, I don't know. It was just really emotionally and physically draining. It was a horrible relationship to be in to then, like, notice how much it affected me and how much it, like, really broke me. But I'm happy that I'm, like, feeling a lot more healed now. 
I feel like during that time you guys noticed my relationship was silent but then you saw my personality just dwindle. You saw the sparkle in my eye dwindle away and you guys were like, are you okay? I was dealing with like spurts of anxiety, depression and trying to like comprehend what's going on because I had my ex that I was fighting with and, and my mom and I weren't getting along and like then just like there's a lot going on and I'm all like, you know, ramped up and I, I felt lost in my own way. And like, I, I feel so much better. I'm in such a better place now. Um, I have a healthy relationship and everything is like, looking back, like God brought me through some of the worst times of my life. And he's always been there for me, like through everything. I don't know who I would be honestly without God during all of those crazy um, instances, but... I have to believe that there has always been a plan and a reason for things and maybe I was a reason for him to, to somehow either get help or something. Maybe I played a role in growing him or maybe, well, I mean, I know it grew me. It changed me tremendously. I don't feel like I'm naive anymore and I stopped, I don't know, I took more accountability into making sure that the person I was with was treating me the right way and that's a very valuable lesson. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it wasn't like too much. I feel like I tried to explain so much to you guys in one video, so hopefully you got the gist of it. But if you're in like a toxic relationship, girl, you need to you need to maneuver your way out because I promise that God has so much better plans for you than that and until I was able to let go, God couldn't bring like the guy I'm with now into my life and he is just like the epitome of somebody who, how God describes love. Love is patient, love is kind. So yeah, I hope I like let you guys into a little bit more of my life. I'm sure we're gonna do more of these get ready with me chit chat things because there's so much life lessons that have happened and um, crazy stuff. I love you guys. I hope you could like the makeup. I feel like I wouldn't ever really wear it out, but it was kind of fun to play with pink. I feel like the lashes might be a little bit long, but <laughs> yeah. I love you guys, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!